This video is sponsored by LearnSQL.com. Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to share with you my top 10 SQL queries that in my opinion are very commonly asked during SQL interviews. Now, if you are able to solve these 10 SQL queries and not just these 10, but if you are able to solve these type of SQL queries, then you give yourself a very good chance to clear almost any SQL interview. Now, before I can start, I want to mention that I have 10 SQL queries. I will not be able to solve all the 10 SQL queries in this video because then the video is going to be extremely long. Rather, I'll just be spending maybe one minute on each SQL query trying to quickly explain what the query is, what the problem statement is and what my solution is. Okay. Now, all the solution, the scripts, the data sets and the problem statement, everything, I'll be placing it in my blog. I'll leave the link to my blog in the video description so you can definitely download it for free and then learn it yourself. Okay. Now, if there are any SQL queries for which you need more details, more explanation, then let me know in the comments below and I'll try to make a separate video about it in the future. Okay. Now, let's start with the query number one. So, the first query is how do you delete duplicate data in your table? And I think this is a very common question that you can always expect in your SQL interviews. So, I have been given a table. It's a cars table. It has information about different cars. So I have model ID, model name, the color of the car and the brand of the car. And I can see that I have seven records here, but the first two records, it belongs to the car Nissan Leaf. You can see that these two records are actually duplicated, even though the ID is different, but these details are of the same car, right? Same way, if I go down, you can see that I have Hyundai Ionic 5 and these two records, the record number 5 and 6 are also duplicated, right? Now, I need to write a query which is going to delete these duplicate records, okay? And the output should look something like this. So, this is my requirement. Now, in order to solve this problem, what I can do is I can basically delete duplicate data in multiple different ways. In fact, I have made a separate video where I've shown you 10 different queries to delete duplicate data. Okay. But I'm not going to be explaining all of that in detail. Now I'll be leaving a link to that particular video in the video description. So if you want to check out and understand how to write all of these queries, I, you can probably watch that video. Okay. Now for this particular query here, whenever I ask this question, to a candidate whenever I'm taking an interview, I always ask them to provide me multiple solutions. And that is why I'm going to give you three different solutions to this particular problem here. Okay. So you can see that I have this cars data here. And if I just run this, you can see that I have all of that data here, the same data that I showed you. Now, one, the solution number one that I have to delete duplicate data is by using the group by command and by taking the minimum of the unique identifier. Okay. So here I have a unique identifier model ID. What I'll do is I'll group the data based on the model name and the color. So wherever I have duplicate data, I will kind of get multiple records for that, right? From that multiple records, I'll take the minimum of the model ID. So in this case, for every record, I will get only, so when I run this query, right? So if I show you, so I have seven records here. If I run this, I'll only get five because these are the unique five records in that table. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll delete all the records from the car, which are, which are basically anything other than these five. Okay. So this is my method number one. This will delete the two records. So when I run it, you can see that it deleted two records. Okay. So this is my solution number one. Now, similarly, I have solution number two where I'm kind of using the similar method. I'm using the group by, but this time you can see here, I used a not in, I was deleting all the records other than these unique records. But here what I do is I write a subquery which is going to fetch me only the duplicated records. So it's going to fetch me the two duplicated records. Okay. And then I'll delete only those two records. Okay. I'm using the CT ID, which is kind of like a unique identifier for every record, which is present by default in every table in PostgreSQL. Okay. And the third solution is I'm deleting using the window function row number. Okay. So using the row number window function, I'm trying to provide a unique row number for every record and wherever the row number is more than one because I'm partitioning based on the model name and the brand. If, if there are duplicate records based on model name and brand, the row number will be more than one and wherever it is more than one, I will fetch those records and I'll delete all of those records. Okay. So this is my three solutions to delete duplicate data in a table. Now let's move on to the problem number two or the query number two. The query number two is basically to display the highest and lowest salary corresponding to each employee record. Okay. So I have been given an employee table. It has four columns. So employee ID, employee name, department name, and the salary. So what I need to do is in each department, I need to identify what is the highest salary earned by an employee in each department and what is the lowest salary earned by each an employee in each department. Okay. Now, for example, if you see 
the department IT. So you see, I have three records here and the last record here. And in these four records, the lowest salary is, I think, 2000 earned by Robin. And the highest salary, I think, here is earned by Kabir, that is 8000 right? So I need to come up with an output, which is going to add two new columns, highest salary and lowest salary. And corresponding to each department, the highest salary should tell me what is the highest salary earned by each employee and the lowest salary column should tell me the lowest salary earned by each employee. Okay. So this is my requirement. Now, in order to solve this problem, I'll show you the solution. Uh, it's a very simple solution. I'm going to be using the window function and I'm using the min and max function as window function. Now, if you are not aware, min and max are actually part of aggregate functions in SQL, but you can use aggregate functions as window function if you basically use this over clause. Okay. So I'm saying fetch the max of salary. Okay. But I'm using the over. So this means that SQL is going to run this max function as a window function. Okay. So basically it means that what does window function do? It's going to create separate windows or separate partition of records, right? And then it's going to apply this max function for each of that partition separately. So here I'm basically partitioning the data based on the department. So I have four departments, admin, finance, IT and HR. So it's going to create one window or one partition for each of these departments. And within that department, it's going to see what is the max salary earned. Okay. And that will be displayed in the highest salary for each department. And similarly, for the lowest salary, I'm using the min function. So within each of this department, it's going to fetch the lowest salary and it's going to display that lowest salary here. Okay. Now, one additional thing that I'm doing here is whenever you're using the min uh, aggregate function as window function, you will probably have to use this frame clause. Now, what you see here, this is basically called as a frame clause. It kind of makes sure that when the aggregate function or this, whatever the function that you're using, you are applying uh, a window to it. It's going to make sure that it gets all the records in the tape in the data set. Okay. So I'm, I'm basically using range between unbounded preceding and unbounded following. This means it kind of gets access to all the records when it's trying to find the minimum of the salary. Okay. Now I'm not going to be explaining this frame clause in detail because I made a separate video about window functions where I have explained in detail how this uh, uh, frame clause works. I'll leave the link to that video also in the video description. So if you want to learn more about frame clause, you can definitely check out that video. Okay. Now this is basically my solution to solve this problem. Now, before I can move on to the next SQL query, let me first talk about one of the best platforms that you can find online to learn SQL. And the platform is learnsql.com. Now, the reason why I say that this is one of the best platforms to learn SQL is because I have personally been using this platform and seeing this platform for more than a couple of years. And the best part about this platform is the quality of the contents that is present in this platform. So, so the different data sets, the different scenarios, the different examples that they use to explain different concepts are great. And it's not just that you will be learning theoretically all the SQL concepts, but you'll be practically solving so many different SQL queries to learn all the different concepts. Depending on what you want to learn in SQL, whether you want to learn, let's say, all the basics concepts, maybe about joins, or you want to learn about window functions, or you want to learn SQL just for data analysis, or let's say you want to learn all the advanced concepts in SQL, or let's say you just want to practice solving SQL queries. So depending on what you want to learn, you will find some codes available on this platform, which you can just take and learn SQL. And just to tell you how good this platform is, my wife, who comes from a completely non-IT background, when she was learning SQL, this was the platform that she used to always come back to. She had taken several different courses on Udemy, Coursera, etc. But this is the platform that she used to like the most. And I used to ask her, why do you come back to this platform so much? And she used to say that she finds it very easy and interesting to learn on this platform. The reason is the user interface is very good. It's very interesting, very intuitive. You kind of will exactly know how to navigate through different sections very easily. The examples, the scenarios are very engaging. You will find it interesting. And and you will be solving and writing multiple different SQL queries. So you kind of will find it interesting to spend time on this platform. Now, the best part is that currently for the next couple of days, there is a black week sale going on with which you can get around 72% off. So I think it's a pretty good time to check out this platform and to learn SQL from this platform. And one important thing is that recently in learnsql.com, they have introduced this new certificate, the certificate for SQL competency, where anyone, even if you have not purchased any course for free, you can just sign up to the platform and you can take this competence test, okay, SQL competence test. Now, what this kind of does is, 
it's kind of going to test your knowledge on SQL. So if you want to know how good you are with SQL, then this is a great certificate that you can have. Okay, so you can just go and you can sign up and you can take this assessment. And if you score, I think 70%, you will get the certificate. But let's say you fail and you do not get 70%, then you can retake the test after 30 days. Now let's get back into our video. Now let's move on to the third query. The third query that I have is basically to find the actual distance. So you can see that I have been given this data or this given input table. It's a cars table. You can see that I have information about cars. So there is three different columns. There is different cars, car one, car two, car three. These are the different days and these are the distance it has traveled. But this is what you what you see here is basically the cumulative distance. So what this means is the car one on day one, it traveled 50 kilometers, the same car on day two, it's mentioned as 100 kilometers, but it is cumulative distance. That means the actual distance the car traveled on day two would be the distance, this, this distance, day two distance minus a day one distance, and that would be 50, right? Same way, the same car, that is car one on day three, it's mentioned like it the cumulative distance is 200, but the actual distance that the car traveled only on day three would be 200 minus 100, that is 100, right? And that is exactly what you need to come up with. So you need to write a query, which is going to, provide a last column or a new column, which is the actual distance the car traveled on each day. Okay, so here you can see that car one traveled 50 kilometers on day one, car one traveled 50 kilometers on day two, on day three it traveled 100 kilometers. And the same thing you need to do for the remaining cars. Okay, now I hope you understand this. The basic thing is the given distance is cumulative distance. You need to find the actual distance. Okay, now in order to solve this problem, the solution is actually very simple. As you can see, the solution is like, one or two lines. And what I'm basically doing is I'm using the lang, lag window function. Okay. Now what I'm basically doing is my intention was every time if I want to find the actual distance, I need to get the cumulative distance and subtract it with the cumulative distance from the previous day. Okay. So what I'll do is I'm taking the cumulative distance here for every record minus I'm taking the cumulative distance from the previous record. In order to fetch the data from the previous record, we always use the lag window function, right? So I'm saying go one record prior. And if there are no previous record, then by default it is zero because for the very first record, there would be no previous record, right? So that time the lag is going to return zero. So it will be 50 minus zero, it will return 50, okay? So this is basically the concept, nothing much here. I'm partitioning the I'm partitioning the data based on cars because I'm I'm kind of like creating a partition for each car. And then I'm finding the cumulative distance from the previous day and subtracting it uh, with the cumulative, cumulative distance of the current day. Okay. So this is actually my solution. Now I might be going a little fast because I want to keep this video as short as possible, but you can definitely go through these solutions and understand what's happening yourself. Okay. Now, quickly, let's move on to the query number four. And the query number four that I have is, basically I have been given an input and I need to derive the expected output, okay? Now, what I have is I have a table which is telling me the distance between two different cities. So the source and the destination and the distance. You can see that the distance between Hyderabad or Bangalore and Hyderabad is 400 kilometers. And the distance between Hyderabad and Bangalore is again 400 kilometers. And the same thing for Mumbai, Delhi, Delhi, Mumbai, 400 and Chennai, Pune and Pune, Chennai again 400. Now, if I look carefully, I can say that the records are kind of like duplicated, not exactly duplicated, but these are redundant data, right? Because you're basically mentioning the same information twice. So what we need to do is we need to eliminate one of these records. So you just tell the distance between Bangalore and Hyderabad as 400, Chennai and Pune as 400 and Mumbai and Delhi as 400. Okay. I'm sure you have seen this query probably many different times in LinkedIn or many other places, but it's a very common question that you can expect during interviews. Now, in order to solve this problem, what I'm going to be doing is I'm just using the self join concept in SQL. Okay. Now this is basically my solution. What I'm doing is I have this data, but in this data that is given, I do not have any unique identifier. I need a unique identifier for each of this record because I'm going to use that to eliminate one of the record when I'm getting my output. So what I'll do is I'm using the CT. The first thing that I'll do is from this table, I'm just adding a new column row number. So row number window function will just add a unique row number for every record, right? So I'm adding this. So once I have this unique identifier, then what I'll do is this whole CT, I'm just using it twice. So once I'm just calling it table one, the second time I'm calling it table two, T2, okay? And then what I'll do is, so 
you need to imagine this. This basically depends on how much you can imagine and understand. Imagine this same table is present twice. Okay. And I'm doing, I'm joining the source of table one with the destination of table two. So this record will join with this record and the source of, or basically the destination of table one with the source of table two. Okay. So I'm joining this with this and this with this. So when I, if I just had these two join condition, then I'll still get all of these records. But then I have one record, one condition such that I only fetch when the row number of the table one is less than the row number of table two. That means only one of these records will get fetched and the other record will never get fetched because of this particular condition. Okay. And that is when, if I run this query, you can see that from six, now I'm only getting the three records, which is actually my expected output. Okay. So this is basically the problem. Okay. I hope it's, it's, you are able to understand what I was trying to explain. Now I have, I think made a separate video about this particular query. I, if I find that video, I'll try to leave a link to that video in the description. So if you want to get more details and understand self join in detail, then you can probably watch that video. Okay. Now let's move on to the query number five. The query number five that I have is kind of like ungroup the given input data. Okay. Now this is also pretty commonly asked, especially if you're attending FANG interviews, then these are the kind of questions that you can expect. Okay. Now you can see that I have given an, I have been given an input table. It has ID, item name and total count. And you can see that I have water bottle. They are saying there are totally two water bottles. Tent, there are totally one tent and apple, there is totally four apples. Okay. What I need to do is I need to ungroup this data, meaning if there are two water bottles, I need to have water bottles mentioned in two different rows. Okay. If there is one tent, then I need to have the tent mentioned in one different row. And if I have four apples, then there should be four rows with that value apple. Okay. So how do you kind of like ungroup this data into separate rows. Okay. In order to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm just using the recursive SQL functionalities. So you can see that I have this travel items table. It has three records, right? And what I'm doing is I am using recursion. Now I'm not going to be explaining recursion in detail, but I have made a separate video about recursive SQL queries where I have explained in detail how recursion works. Okay. If you want to understand that better, I'll leave the link to that video in the video description. Okay. So, but quickly, just to explain you now, as part of recursion, you write this recursive keyword. I'm using PostgreSQL. Okay. And you give a name to your city and then you write two different queries. Okay. Which should be separated by a union all. Okay. Or a union. The first part of this query, this is called as the base query. Inside this query, what I'm doing is I'm basically fetching the data as it is. Okay. I'm using this column level just to understand in each level what data I'm fetching. Okay. And then once I have my base query, that is all of these records, then in the second query here, this is basically the query that executes from the second iteration. Okay. In the first iteration, only this query gets executed, the base query. Then from the second iteration onwards, only the below part of the query gets executed. Now, whenever this query gets executed, what I'm basically doing is I'm joining the result from the previous iteration that will be returned from CT. I'm joining it with my actual table, the main table, and then I'm joining it using the unique identifier that is ID and item name, right? And then I'm putting a termination condition here such that whenever the total count will become zero, it kind of will terminate. So this will basically execute until the total count is greater than zero. Okay. Or greater than one. Okay. Now, how does this total count value change is because in this query here, you can see I'm kind of subtracting one value in each iteration. Okay. In the first iteration, total count. So let's say for this water bottle in the first iteration, total count is two. In the second iteration, total count will become two minus one, one. In the third iteration, total count will become zero, but zero is not considered. So it will not be shown. Okay. And the same thing will happen for other items. So let's say if I just execute this whole query now, okay. And I have this level just to tell you in each iteration, what happened, you can see that in the first iteration here. Okay. So I returned all these three records as it was. Okay. Because that was in my main table in the second iteration, the water bottle will become two minus one. So you can see that uh, water bottle is displayed here in the second iteration. Apple is also displayed, but 
I think there was another tent. Tent was only one. In the second iteration, tent is not present, right? When it comes to the third iteration, water bottle also will become zero. So that is also not displayed, but apple will still be there. And the same thing will happen in the fourth iteration, okay? I hope you are able to understand what I'm trying to explain. If you need to understand recursion more in detail, then you should definitely watch my recursive SQL query tutorial video, okay? I'll leave the link to that in the video description, okay? Now this, I think, was the fifth SQL query. Now let's move on to the sixth SQL query that I have. And the sixth SQL query is to derive IPL matches. Okay. So basically here we have two different uh, queries that we have been asked. So what we need to do is we have been given an input table. Now, if you do not know what is IPL, it's basically a cricket league that happens once a year where there are 10 teams that participate and they play with each other. Okay. So you have these are the 10 teams that is mentioned. They are uh, team code and they are team name. Okay. I need to come up with a query that is going to tell me each team has to play with the other team. Okay. So here I have each team should play with the other team only once. And then I also need to write another query where each team is going to play with the other team twice. Okay. So this is the expected output. I have actually there are much more records than what you see here. Okay, but I just showed you some sample records. Okay, so this is the sample uh, output for when the team plays the other team just once. And this is the sample output when the team plays the other team twice. Okay, now how do I solve this problem? So let me go back to my PostgreSQL PG admin tool. And here I have my table, the team's table. There are 10 records here. Okay, now in order to solve this problem, the for, for the first problem, that is how do I make sure that every team plays the other team just once okay the solution is again simple the first of all what i need to do is i am going to be using the self join as you can see here okay and i do not have a unique identifier in this table so the very first thing i'll do is in the ct i'm going to create the same table or basically query the same table but i'll add a unique identifier by using the row number window function okay once i have the unique identifier then i'm just joining that same table to itself and i'm just saying whenever i'm joining the id from the first table should be less than the id from the second table that is the team versus the opponent okay this way this one record will never match with the other uh, same record from the other table so this team will only play with the remaining nine teams only once okay and that is how this query will work and when i execute this query you will see that i'll get 45 records okay because each of the 10 teams played with the other team just once Okay, so there are totally 45 matches. Okay, now if I have to make sure that each team plays the other team twice, then the only change in the whole query is to just change this operator. Instead of less than to symbol, I'm just making it not equal to. Okay, when I make it not equal to, the complete meaning of this join kind of changes. Okay, now what happens is every team will play with, so when I have, let's say this query here. Okay, this is my first table. I'm joining this table to itself that is i'm calling it like the opponent table right what happens is this record will join with all the other records except for this same record and if you can imagine what happens is after each iteration it will no, it will basically not match the current record that it is basically trying to match but other than that it will match with every other record okay i'm not sure if i'm explaining this properly but i have made a separate video about this particular query as well where i have explained in detail how this actually works okay because if i try to explain this in detail i'll need a lot more time so if you want me to make a separate video to explain this in detail let me know in the comments below okay so this is basically my query number six okay and it's a very common question that you can expect here i have ipl matches but it can be something similar to this as well okay now let's move on to the question number seven the query number seven and this is where you see that you have been given a table it has three columns it's sales date sales date the customer id and the amount you need to come up with an output which looks something like this okay now as soon as you look at this query you kind of probably get an idea that this is where you will need to do a pivot right a pivot or probably you could do it using the case statement okay so you need to transform the row level data into column level data okay now in order to solve this problem what i am doing is as i already told you we can solve it using two different ways okay one is you can use the pivot function but since i'm using postgresql pivot is not supported in postgresql but cross tab is supported cross tab is a function which kind of converts row level data into column level data it's kind of similar to pivot but the syntax is different okay so you can do solve this problem using this cross tab function 
or you can also solve it by using the simple case statement. Okay, but let's say if you're using some other databases, maybe Microsoft SQL Server or Oracle, then you can use Pivot. Now, in my in my file where I'm going to be sharing with you the solution, you will find the solution for other databases as well. Okay, so using Pivot. Now, I'll not be explaining this query in detail because this is pretty big, and I think I have made a separate video about it. I'll leave the uh, description of in the description I'll leave the video link where you can understand this better okay but what crosstab basically does in the most simplest of terms crosstab function takes two arguments the first is the sql query which this sql query should have three columns the first is a unique identifier second is the number of uh, columns that you need to come up with in your output and the third column is a value that will be placed in each of that newly created columns okay and then here i'm basically this is kind of like the output columns what it will be called okay along with the data types okay and then here i'm just i think i will be getting null values i'm just replacing it with zero and then i'm just display displaying the final values to handle i think i have some dollar symbols to handle and concatenate all of that i'm doing that okay now if i just run this query and if i show you whether it actually works but if, if i run this uh, and i need to minimize this you can see that if i run I'm getting the output how I want it. Okay, so this is basically the query using the cross tab. Same thing can be done by using pivot, but PostgreSQL does not support pivot, but in Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server, you will need to use pivot. And I have placed that solution in my file. Okay, so this is my query number seven. Now let's move on to query number eight. Query number eight is basically find the hierarchy. Okay, you are given I think an employee table, it has an employee ID, name, manager ID, salary and designation. Okay. We have been asked to find the hierarchy of employees under a given manager, Asha. Okay. So here I have a manager, Asha, you can see this row number seven, right? And her manager ID is one and Asha's employee ID is seven. I need to find the hierarchy of employees under Asha. So how many people are actually working under Asha? Now I can see that Asha's employee or employee ID is seven. And in the manager ID column, if I look for seven, I can see that I have two places where I have seven. So Michael and Arvind are the two employees whose managers are, manager is seven. That means Michael and Arvind work under Asha, right? But then if I see that Michael has an employee ID of five and five is present here in the manager ID column. That means Michael is also a manager who has three employees under him, Satya, Jia and David. Right. So the total number of employees under Asha would be Michael, Arvind and these three, that is Satya, Jia and David. So I need to come up with a query which is going to display that, okay, as shown here in the expected output. Now, in order to solve that problem, again, I'll be using recursive SQL queries. So the concept is again simple. I just say in my base query, I fetch the data for Asha. I take uh, the, I think from this CT, I'm taking the ID of Asha, that is seven, okay. And I'll search for this seven under the manager ID column in the employee details table. So, and I'm having the, and this is because it's a recursion, it will kind of recursively look for that manager ID in that employee details table, okay? So when I run this whole query, you can see that I am getting all the employees under Asha in this format, okay? So this is basically my solution using uh, recursive SQL queries, okay? Now, let's move on to the query number nine. The query number nine is basically to find a difference in average sales. Okay. Now you can see that I have been given a sales table and this sales table is pretty big. It has 2,823 rows, but here I'm just showing you some sample data. Okay. We need to write a query, which is going to find the difference in average sales for each month of 2003 and 2004. Okay. So I have the sales data here and I have the year data here. And I think I have the month ID here. I also have, should have the order date here right? For each month, I need to find the average sales for the year 2003 and 2004 and then compare it between these two years. So I here, I basically my output should be 12 rows, one row for each month. Okay. And this is the difference in the sales that happened between the Jan 2003 and Jan 2004. Same way, this is the difference in the sales that happened in Feb 2003 and Feb 2004. Okay. So I need to come up with a query like this okay now in order to solve this problem what i'm basically doing is i'm using the concept of self join and ct now if i show you the sales order data you can see that i have 2800 plus records i have i think the 
sale uh, column here okay and then the order date column here from where i can fetch the month and the year or i can also use the month id and the year id to fetch the month and the year okay the first thing that i'm doing is i'm writing a subquery here and putting it inside the cd and what this subquery is basically doing is i am taking the data from this table only for the years 2003 and 2004 and i'm grouping the data based on the year id the month id Basically, I am also using month. I am taking month ID because I need to sort the data based on the proper month ID and that is why I am having the month ID. But I am grouping the data mainly based on year, month and then finding the average sales. Okay. So for each month of each of these two years, I am getting the average sales. Once I have that, what I will do is I will put this whole CT in my main query and I am using it twice. So I am using a self join. I am calling it this once for year 2003 and second one for year 2004 okay i'm joining it based on the month because each of this year the month will be common right and then i'm how do i say i want one table to only be fetching data for the year 2003 and other only for 2004 i just put that by using this filter using the year id column right and i'm joining it using the month and then once i join it using the month i'll just display that month and i'm basically taking the i'm kind of doing a subtraction okay so the average sales per month from 2003 minus the average sales per month from 2004 okay and this will always be for the correct month because i'm joining using the proper months here right so this will give me the difference but some of the months there might be negative values in order to eliminate the negative values i am using the abs apps uh, function this will eliminate the negative values and then i think there will be a lot of decimal points hence i am using the rounding so that i only get two decimal points okay so if i run this now you can see that for each of these 12 months i am getting the difference that i actually wanted okay so this is basically the solution to this particular query i hope it's clear now let's move on to the last query that I have and this is the kind of query that you can generally expect a lot during interviews. Okay, the, the query is basically pizza delivery status. Now it has a pretty long problem statement. So let's first understand the problem statement and then we will see how to solve it. A pizza company is taking orders from customers and each pizza ordered is added into their database. Okay, so a customer is ordering a pizza and all the details are entered into a database. Each order has an associated status like created, submitted and delivered. Now, you can, if you see the input table here, I have the customer name, order ID and the status. So, John is a customer. He has made two orders, J1 and J2 and his status is delivered. David has made three orders. His status for one of them is submitted, the other one is delivered, the other one is created. Smith made one order and his status is submitted. Krish made another order whose status is created. Okay. So these are the three different status you can have when a customer makes an order. Okay. And then they are saying an order's final status is calculated based on this based on these four rules. Okay. So this is the order when when the customer makes an order this is the three different status that you can have okay but the final status of that particular order depends on these four rules and the rules are when all orders of a customer have a status as delivered the customer's order has a final status as completed okay so that means john has two orders and both are delivered that means you can say that the final status for john would be uh, that is completed right and that is basically what you want in your expected output you can see here for john the final status is completed now the second rule is if a customer has some orders that are not delivered and some orders that are delivered the final status is in progress that means if there is any customer whose some of the orders are delivered but some other uh, orders are having some other status then their final status should be in progress and for that example is David. You can see that David has one order that is D2 which is delivered but the other two orders one is submitted and one is created. So in this case for David the final status should be in progress. Okay. The third one is if all customers orders are submitted the final status is awaiting progress. Okay. So if all the orders of a customer is submitted let's say I have Smith and he has only one order and it is submitted then his final status should be awaiting progress. So for Smith it is awaiting progress here in the final output. And the last one is otherwise the final status is awaiting submission. So anything other than this, this final status should be awaiting submission. Okay. So how do you write a query to handle all of these different statuses? Okay. Now let's look at the solution and you can see that I have the customer orders table created. It has seven rows with information about I think four different customers. Now what I have basically done is 
you can see that I have written four different queries. So if I just maximize this, you can see that I have one query to handle the status delivered, okay, or basically to, to get the status completed. I have another query to handle the status in progress. I have another query to handle the status awaiting progress and a final query to handle the last status awaiting submission, okay. What I'm doing is in each of these queries, I'm basically implementing the logic that is mentioned in each of these points. So for example, the first point is when all the customer orders are delivered, then the customer final status is completed. So if everything is delivered, so what I'm saying is from the customer orders table, if the status is delivered and I'm checking if there are no other records not exist, if there are no other records with status submitted or created, that means for this particular customer, you can see that I'm joining based on customer for this particular customer. If he has one record with delivered and there are no other records with these two statuses, then this we can say that all the status, uh, all the record of this particular customers would have the status as delivered only. And that means the final status can be completed. Okay, this is what I'm doing. The next one is if a customer has some orders delivered and some other orders, maybe some other status, then the final status should be in progress. And that is what I have implemented in this query number two here or the, the second query here. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm taking the customer where any one of the status any one of the record status is delivered and I'm also checking exist. Okay. The only difference between this query and this query is that here I'm using not exist here. I'm using exist. I'm checking along with this record, which is delivered. There should also be some other record for the same customer, which can either be submitted or created. If there is, then that for that particular customer, the final status will be in progress. Okay. And the same thing I'm doing for the other two queries. I'll not explain this because I think this is self-explanatory. If you understand these two, you will probably understand these two as well. Okay. So these are the 10 SQL queries that in my opinion, if you can solve it and if you know to solve these type of queries, then you can be rest assured you will be able to solve almost any type of queries in any interviews. I hope you like this video and if you did and if you have faced any of these top 10 queries in your interviews, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Bye.